This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Would you look at that? We've got another tick watch in the house and I think you Android users are gonna wanna stick around for this one. Let's take a look. What's up, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit and this is the brand new TickWatch Pro 5. If you've never heard of the brand TickWatch before, they've been around for a while and they've had a bunch of watches in the past that I've actually reviewed on this channel, like the original TickWatch and the TickWatch 3 and the TickWatch E3 and the Ultra. They've all been pretty cool. They've had a, a lot of unique features and it's no different here, but on the TickWatch Pro 5, they've also upgraded a few things like GPS performance and chipset, along with the internal guts and the operating system. As a quick spoiler for you Android users out there, if you've been in the market for something like an Apple Watch, but you can't get an Apple Watch because you've got an Android phone, the TickWatch Pro 5 is worth looking into because it's got a lot of similarities to something like an Apple Watch SE or Series 8 in a different form factor with a few different features and it works on Android. Before we dive all the way into this video, I do want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video and that's Squarespace. If you don't know what Squarespace is, they make and host websites and they make making websites incredibly easy. You can have a website up and running in like five minutes by using one of their pre-made templates for a variety of purposes like podcasting, video creator stuff like me, and even restaurants and yoga studios. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can design your website you can host your merch store and sell stuff and you can take payments right through the platform and print shipping labels. It does it all for one reasonable price. And I've personally been a Squarespace customer for a number of years over at chasethesummit.com where I publish my blog and I post my podcast and I even sell my own merch through the e-commerce platform. If you can't tell by now, I'm a big fan of Squarespace, which is why I was happy to bring them on as a sponsor for this video. And if you wanna make your own website because everyone needs a website these days, go check out squarespace.com slash chase the summit or the link in the description down below to get started and you'll get a discount of 10% off your order. With that out of the way, let's move right into the first topic of this video and that's going to be pricing and options because you gotta know how much this thing costs. So the TickWatch Pro 5 comes in at $349 here in the USA. That's going to vary where you are in the world, but that's how much it costs for me. And at the time of filming this, I believe it only comes in one color, which will be obsidian or black for sure. On top of pricing and options, I also wanna talk about compatibility because the TickWatch Pro 5, like I said, is compatible with Android devices and it is using Wear OS 3.5. Unfortunately, that means this watch is not compatible with iPhones or Apple devices at all. So if you are an Apple user and you're watching this video, you may wanna skip past this video because you can't really use this watch. Maybe head over and check out one of my Apple Watch videos because that would be more applicable. For all you Android users out there though, buckle up because there's a lot to cover here. Moving right along, let's talk about the setup process with the TickWatch Pro 5 because it's pretty cool. Since this is running the latest and greatest Google Wear OS 3.5, as soon as I turned the watch on, my Motorola Android phone picked it up immediately and asked if I wanted to pair to it. After my phone picked up the TickWatch Pro 5, it suggested I download the app for the watch and that is the Mobvoi Health app. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now the Mobvoi Health app has been around for a while and through the generations of these TickWatch devices, it has gotten a lot better throughout the years. As you can see here from the dashboard of the Mobvoi Health app, you've got things like your activity for the day, your exercises for the day, my last night of sleep, you can see there eight hours and three minutes. And scrolling down, I've got my heart rate throughout the day, my SpO2, my stress score, and my estimated VO2 max, which is looking a little bit low in this department. Of course, you can dive deeper into all of these metrics. Like here, I dived into the activity widget. And as you can see here, I've got 16,000 steps for the day, 65 minutes of exercise, uh, 11 hours active, and 34 flights of stairs climbed. And if I scroll down, I get graphs for all of that information. If I dive into the sleep widget, here you can see additional information for my previous night of sleep, like how long I slept for eight hours and three minutes, my sleep quality, and all of my sleep stages. So here it shows a breakdown of my awake time, my REM sleep, my light sleep, and my deep sleep. And if I scroll down even further here, there's even more information like my average heart rate throughout the night, along with my blood oxygen saturation throughout the night. Within the Mobvoi Health app, you can also view device information. That'll give you your battery level,
level along with what watch face you're using. And you can actually dive in and customize the watch. You can change around the different tiles and widgets, which I'll show you in a minute. And you can actually download third party tiles and activate them as well. Like here, you've got a calculator and hand washing timer and all these other things that are available. Another cool feature about the Mobvoi Health app is that it allows you to customize your watch face. So you can change out the watch face to completely to something totally different, or you can actually customize how the watch face looks. As you can see here, it shows all these different widgets and complications that you can add to your watch face from your favorite contact to Google Wallet. Within the Mobvoi Health app is also where you can view all of your past exercises. For me, that's mainly running. And as you can see here, I've got a breakdown of all of my stats for this particular run that I went on yesterday. One hour of duration, 735 calories burned, my pace, my distance, my estimated VO2 max based on this particular run, along with a recovery advisor to let you know how long to wait before you go on your next run. And again, if I scroll down here, there's a ton of information from my heart rate to my heart rate zones, along with a pace breakdown and pace chart, and my step frequency along with step length, which is kind of like cadence. And at the bottom here, you do have the splits for all of my laps. And all the way at the bottom here is a map of my route, along with elevation data, which is a little bit confusing because it shows that I had 1600 feet of elevation gain and loss when this particular one was actually pretty flat. So I don't know what that's all about. On top of viewing your activities within the Mobvoi Health app, you can also share your activities to third party services like Strava and Google Fit, which is very important because within this app itself, within the Mobvoi Health app, you cannot export a GPX or Fit file or a TCX file or anything like that to bring it over to other services. So it's pretty important that you share this with Strava and that way you have a central location where you can download all of your data. Now that we've taken a quick look at the app, I'm not gonna dive too deep on the app. It's a decent app. Let's move right along to the hardware because that's probably what you care about and I've waited long enough to show you the actual watch. So here's the Tick Watch Pro 5. And as you can see, it looks a lot like the older Tick Watches of the past. I think I have the Tick Watch Ultra here on the left and the Tick Watch Pro 5 on the right. And really the most notable difference between these two is that the Tick Watch Ultra and the Tick Watch 3, I think, both had these two buttons on the side. Uh, one was kind of a digital crown and one was a back button, while the new version here, the Tick Watch Pro 5, has a single digital crown along with a flat button right above it. Another minor difference between the two is that on the older Tick Watch Ultra here, the bezel had these little tick marks all around it for kind of like compass bearings. They were just for looks, really, while the new version here has sort of a knurled finish to it. I don't know if you can even see that on the camera, but there's kind of a nice texture around the metal bezel on the watch. If I flip these watches over, you'll notice a couple of other minor differences. First up is the charging port. They actually do use the same charger. So I can take the included charger, attach it to the old Tick Watch, or I can plug it right into the new Tick Watch. It works on both, which is nice. Another difference you're gonna notice from the old Tick Watch to the new Tick Watch is an updated heart rate sensor. And we'll talk about heart rate accuracy later in this video. When it comes to the actual size and weight of the Tick Watch Pro 5, it measures 50 millimeters long, 48 millimeters wide, and it's about 12.2 millimeters thick, which makes it a pretty substantial watch, but it's not large or uh, obtrusive in any way. I can wear this watch to bed, I can wear it all day. It's pretty comfortable, it's pretty lightweight, just coming in at 44 grams. For a quick size comparison, I've got some other devices on the table here to compare to, and just at a glance, it doesn't look that big of a watch because of these other watches being pretty chunky. But all the way on the left here, we do have the Apple Watch Series 7, same size as the Series 8. This is the 45 millimeter form factor. Next to that, we have the T-Rex Ultra by Amazfit. This, I believe, is like a 49 millimeter form factor. Then we've got the Tick Watch Pro 5 in the middle here. Next to that, we've got this Sunto Vertical, which is a large watch coming in at 50 millimeters in diameter. And all the way on the right is the big chunky Garmin Fenix 7X coming in at 51 millimeters in diameter. In terms of build quality on the Tick Watch Pro 5, it's made out of plastic and metal. So the bezel around the front of the display here is made out of aluminum. The case itself has some bits of metal along with plastic. And then the back of the watch is entirely made out of plastic. The buttons on the side here are metal and they do feel quite nice. They've got a pretty substantial click to them, although it's not like a deep click, but it is something you notice when you press it. And the digital crown is also pretty clicky. It does have some good tactile feedback, so you know you pressed it. This watch is, of course, waterproof down to five atmospheres or 50 meters, so you can go in the pool with it, you can take a shower with it, just no deep water diving or snorkeling or anything like that. The included 
recommended band on the TicWatch Pro 5 is an industry standard quick release band. I believe it's 22 millimeters, which means you can pop this off with your fingernail and then you can put on all kinds of different colors and materials to your heart's content that you find on Amazon or any third party support site like that. Quick interruption, if you're enjoying this video or finding it fun, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. Also, if you're considering and picking up a TicWatch Pro 5, check out the links in the description down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you, so you might as well use them. Okay, back to the video. Next up, let's talk about the display on the TicWatch Pro 5 because it's very unique. It's not unique to TicWatch because they've done this before, but it is unique in the grand scheme of watches out there. So this watch utilizes a dual layer display. What that means is on top, if I angle it at the light, you can see that it does have a memory and pixel transflective display, similar to something like a Garmin or a Coros watch or something like that out there. What that means is that this display takes very little power and because of that, it remains on all the time. This display never turns off. So if you're using the watch, you can always tell the time of day, you can see the date and you've got some general information about your step count and things like that below. This display helps the TicWatch Pro 5 get its incredible battery life, which we'll talk about later in this video. But on top of that memory and pixel display, you can also just push a button and access the brilliant AMOLED display. This is a beautiful, bright, full-on AMOLED touch-enabled display. It's got really good color, it's pretty bright, and it's very responsive to touch. If I swipe around on the screen here, you can see that it's very fluid, it's got a really nice refresh rate. It's a pleasure to use this display. Now on top of that dual layer display, you do have a Gorilla Glass lens that's protecting it. This is not a sapphire lens or anything like that. So it is scratch resistant, but it's not scratch proof. The really unique thing about the TicWatch Pro 5 and this dual layer display is that if you wanna preserve battery life for a very long time while you're using Using the watch, you can drop into something called essential mode. As you can see here in the menu settings for essential mode, it says essential mode greatly extends your battery life to exit, press and hold the side button until it boot up appears. And what that means is basically what's gonna happen is the watch will disable the AMOLED display entirely to preserve battery life and it will last for a very long time. Another unique feature to the transflective display on this dual layer display is that it's got a variable color backlight. You can see here it's showing blue, but when you're out on a run, if you're doing anything cardio, you're at the gym, you're running, you're riding a bike, this backlight will actually change colors to let you know what heart rate zone you're in during your activity. So if you're doing something pretty low intensity, this will be green. If you're doing something very high intensity, like closing in on your max heart rate, this will turn red. And there's a bunch of colors in between there. I found this to be actually pretty cool. I thought it was a little bit gimmicky at first, but when I took this on a run, it was pretty cool to see at a glance what heart rate zone I was in without having to read any numbers because the backlight actually changed colors to indicate my heart rate zone. So the transflective display does have a multicolor backlight but when you turn on the AMOLED display to see more data in the Tick Exercise app, it doesn't have that multicolor back Ground. It basically just has a black background instead of having a multicolor background. And I kind of wish it acted the same way as the transflective display, kind of confusing. Now that we've talked about all of the tech built into this display, let's talk about the actual user experience and the visibility while using it out in direct sunlight because the TicWatch Pro 5 doesn't have the brightest display around. Even if I compare the TicWatch Pro 5 on the right here to my Garmin 400 965 on the left here, you can see that the Garmin is just a little bit punchier. It's got a little bit more contrast. And personally for me, when I took this watch out on a few different runs, I did notice that this display was a little bit hard to read. And that was because of two reasons. First of all, the brightness of the AMOLED display isn't overly bright, like I just said. And secondly, because the Tick Exercise app that's included in the watch uses a very small font and it uses colors that aren't too contrasty, which doesn't help the situation. Of course, you can download third-party apps from the Google Play Store and remedy that, but the built-in app is a little bit hard to read because of that. Now, on the other hand, the transflective display during an activity also shows your distance and your heart rate and your mileage and all of that data is also shown on the transflective display as well. And this display is pretty easy to see if you hit it at the right angle of the sun. But as you can see, here in the studio, I've got a lot of lights set up and it's a little bit hard to read this as well. If you have it kind of angled away from a light source, it's nearly impossible to see what's going on without the backlight. Of course, you can gesture the watch up, 
the backlight kicks on and now you can read it no problem. But when that backlight is off, is it's a little bit hard to read unless you angle the watch at a very particular angle, as you can see there towards my light, it gets a lot easier to read. Moving right along, let's dive into the user interface and all of the smartwatch features packed into the TicWatch Pro 5 because it's got quite a few. The first thing to mention is that this watch is powered by a Snapdragon W5 Plus chipset, which is kind of the latest and greatest when it comes to smartwatch chipsets. And because of that, it's very responsive. This watch has very little lag, almost no delay on anything you do. You can basically swipe around the menu and there's no hangups or delay or glitches or anything like that. It just works really well. On top of that chipset, this watch also has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal storage. That internal storage can be used for things like apps downloaded from the Google Play Store. And you can also store things like music by using the Spotify app or any app out there that downloads music. The TicWatch Pro 5 also does have Bluetooth on board, obviously to connect to your phone, but you can also connect things like earbuds or running sensors and things like that for different apps that can utilize it. The TicWatch Pro 5 also has NFC built in. And what that means is you can use something like Google Wallet in your credit card to pay for stuff. So I can go in Starbucks, buy my coffee, and just tap my watch on the payment thing to pay for my coffee, which is kind of nice. And of course, as you can see here, being a Google Wear OS device, you can drop into the Google Play Store and download literally thousands of third-party apps for all kinds of things. You can get Google Keep, Google Fit, Komoot for trails and navigation, and there's a lot on here. Google Play has been around for a while now, and there's a lot of apps for music, for mapping, for navigation, and a lot more. However, at the time of filming this video, there are a couple of limitations with the TicWatch Pro 5. First of all, the TicWatch Pro 5 is not compatible with Google Assistant yet. They're working on that, but there is no Google Assistant support at the time of filming this video. The TicWatch Pro 5 is also not compatible with the new Fitbit app that's available for other Google Wear OS devices. It cannot work on the TicWatch Pro 5 at the time of filming this video either. That may change, I'm not sure. In terms of navigating around the watch, it's very similar to other Wear OS devices, so I'm not gonna dive too deep on that. Scrolling down from the top of the screen brings you to your quick selection menu, where you can do a variety of things from configure Wi-Fi or put on the water lock or turn the flashlight on, access your Google wallet by clicking that button there. From the watch face, you can also swipe up, and this will bring you to your phone's notifications. So basically anything that shows up on my Motorola Android phone here will also show up on my watch and I can scroll through it here, which is pretty nice. Now, if I swipe to the left or right, I'll start scrolling through my tiles of Google Wear OS. So if I swipe to the right, I've got my forecast weather for the day. I've got my activity for the day. I've got my heart rate throughout the day and a graph for that. I can swipe over again. I've got my SPO2 throughout the day. Swiping over again, I've got my calendar events, so you can see my kid went to daycare today. Swiping over again is a quick way to make a timer. So these are minutes that can have a five minute to 30 minute timer. And like I said before, you can download additional tiles for all sorts of things. There's thousands of tiles out there in the Google Play Store. This is just how it comes out of the box. Now, if I want to get to all of my apps, all I have to do is simply click in on the digital crown on the side of the watch here. And that brings me to my app list. And again, this is just what comes on the watch. There's a lot of other apps out there I'm not gonna talk about. These are just what comes pre-installed. So here you can see things like my agenda, my alarms for the day, my calculators, uh, contacts. These would be your Google contacts from Gmail or whatever. Then you've got essential mode where you can toggle that, find my phone, which would make my phone ring, uh, flashlight, Google wallet, hand washing timer, Google maps if you're navigating around town. You've got media controls to control the music on your phone. You've got messages, so you can text and reply to text by just going in your watch, which is pretty nice. You've got a uh, Mobvoi treadmill that pairs up to their treadmills. One tap measurement, which gives you like your heart rate and pulse and things like that. Then below that, you've got the Google Play Store and Spotify does come pre-installed, which is nice. Below that, we have a barometer, uh, some breathe exercises, tick care, uh, the compass, the tick exercise app, which we'll talk about in a minute. We've got Tick Health, which is all of your wellness metrics and things like that. Tick Oxygen, which is your SpO2 or blood oxygen saturation. And Tick Pulse, which is your heart rate, along with Tick Sleep. As you can see, the word Tick is used a lot in this menu. Another feature of the Tick Watch Pro 5 is that it does have a microphone and speaker on board. And as you can see here, I did download a voice memo app from the Google Play Store, and I'm recording this audio with it right now. From my limited experience with this watch, I have noticed that the microphone quality is pretty good on the TicWatch Pro 5. 
but the speaker is not very good. It's kind of quiet. It's a little bit tinny. It doesn't get very loud and it doesn't really compare to something like an Apple watch, but it does get the job done. If you want to take a call while you're on the go and not have to get your phone out, you can take and make phone calls by using the built-in microphone and speaker, which is pretty nice. Now that we've talked about the user interface, let's dive into the tick exercise app because that's where all of your activities will be recorded like runs and rides. And that's kind of what this channel is all about. So we'll dive into tick exercise. And as you can see here, you are greeted with a list of some pretty common exercises like running and walking. But if I go down and click on more, there's a very generous list of activities here. Everything from running, walking, bouldering, bungee jumping, burpees. Uh, there's a lot in here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. There's over a hundred different activity profiles that you can actually do with this watch. Unfortunately, even though there are over a hundred different activity profiles, there is not a profile for triathlon or multi-sport mode. Now diving into an activity, here you can see a running activity. And here you can see what I was talking about before with visibility. The words above each one of these metrics are very small. The font they used is very small and the fact that they're different colors, I wish they were just all white, that would be easier to see, but they chose orange and green for a lot of these metrics, which does make it kind of challenging to read. But there is a lot of information here within the running activity. I've got my duration, my pace, my speed and distance on the first page. And if I scroll down using the digital crown, I've got my steps, my step frequency and calories burned. Then we've got lap information. Then we've got my current altitude along with elevation gain in descent. Scrolling down again, we do get a breadcrumb navigation map that will show my course while I'm running. Now, unfortunately, this map can't import a GPX activity. So if you wanted to create a course and then execute it with the watch, it doesn't do any form of navigation. It will just display where you've been on the map. The last page here in this activity is a heart rate zone graph. And as you can see here, it will indicate what heart rate zone I'm in and let me know my pulse in the middle of there, which is kind of nice. Now let's talk about what everybody cares about, battery life. The TicWatch Pro 5 comes with an impressive 628 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty big for a watch of this size. Size. That battery will provide up to 80 hours of use as a smartwatch with out of the box settings. That's with everything turned on, including the heart rate sensor, the AMOLED display, everything, you'll get 80 hours of use. And in my use throughout the past couple of weeks, I've noticed that that's pretty true. I can go a few days without having to worry about the battery of this watch. And that's pretty awesome for a watch like this with an AMOLED display. Now, when you do need to actually recharge the TicWatch Pro 5, when you plug it in, it does have a fast charge feature. So in just 30 minutes, it will get you from 0% back up to 65%. With that, let's talk about GPS battery life or GNSS battery life. When you're actually out on a run or ride, how long can you use this watch for? Because personally, I run ultra marathons that can last up to 24 hours in duration, sometimes longer, and I need to know how long the battery lasts while I'm running. Now, unfortunately, TicWatch doesn't provide a spec for this. They don't have like a GPS on battery life spec, even using their own Tick exercise app. So I had to do my own testing. Before I talk about the test results, I wanna talk about a couple of different settings within the Tick Exercise app for running or riding a bike. And as you can see here, there is something in the settings that's called high performance mode. So high performance mode will collect a GPS position or GNSS position every one second. And that'll give you the best accuracy from this watch. Now, if you turn that off and you use standard mode, which is the default setting out of the box, it'll record your position every three seconds. First up, let's talk about high precision or high performance mode where I'm getting that one second accuracy. In that mode, I lost about 10% of battery per hour. So I went on a run at 80% and when I ended, I was at about 70% and that would give me about 10 hours of estimated use in that higher accuracy mode. 10 hours of use is not amazing for a GPS watch, like Garmin's are getting up to like 80 hours of use, but for a watch like this, that's primarily a smartwatch, it's more of an Apple Watch alternative, it's kind of acceptable and I think most people will be okay with that because you're probably not running an ultra marathon with the TicWatch Pro 5, but just keep that in mind. Now, if you do need a longer battery life, you can drop into that standard precision mode, and in that mode, I still lost about 
7% per hour. Now in that mode again, we're only getting a location every three seconds, but that would give you an estimated 14-ish hours of use in that standard precision mode. So in terms of battery life, if you're somebody running 5Ks, even marathons, things like that, you're gonna be totally fine. But if you are someone who is participating in an Ironman or event or an ultra marathon, that's a 50 miler or a 100 miler, the TicWatch Pro 5 may be a little bit limiting for you and you'll end up charging on the go. Now that we've talked about battery life on the TicWatch Pro 5, let's talk about GPS or position accuracy because they kind of go hand in hand. Now the TicWatch Pro 5, does have an updated GPS chipset. It's actually a dual band chipset. So that'll give you dual band GNSS, which is kind of the gold standard when it comes to performance and accuracy. Now, when it comes to real life use and what kind of accuracy I'm getting out of the TicWatch Pro 5 when it comes to going on my runs, I've compared it to a bunch of different watches, including the Garmin Foreigner 965, which is also multi-band enabled, and it's been pretty accurate in my testing so far. I'd say the TicWatch Pro 5 is performing similarly to a lot of the high tier multi-band enabled devices out there like the Apple Watch Ultra or the Foreigner 965. However, it wasn't perfect. In some areas, the lines were a little bit further apart, corners were a little bit cut off, but overall, it was a very good GPS performance in all of my testing so far. However, when you do switch over to that not high performance mode into that standard mode, where you get three second data logging, it does change a bit. The, the tracks become a little bit more choppy because the distance between data being recorded is further apart. I'd say overall, in my testing so far of the TicWatch Pro 5, when it comes to GNSS accuracy, it's pretty good. One thing I do want to note about the TicWatch Pro 5 in that standard mode with the three second data logging is that if you're doing something like riding a bike or you're in a car or something like that and you're trying to record a higher speed activity where you're traveling at 30 miles per hour or something like that on a bike, that three second data logging will become a bigger problem because your data points will become further apart. So if you are on a bike or doing a different activity in a higher speed sport, I would suggest using the high performance mode because you'll get that one second data logging, which will be a lot better. Now that we've talked about GPS accuracy, let's talk about heart rate sensor accuracy using that updated heart rate sensor on the back of the TicWatch Pro 5. Like I said, I've been on a whole bunch of different runs wearing the TicWatch Pro 5 on my wrist using that optical sensor while also wearing the Garmin 400 965 on my other wrist that was paired to an ECG sensor. In this case, this is the Garmin HRM Pro, and that goes on my chest, and these are super accurate, so I use them as a baseline of comparison. Now, as you can see on the graph, the TicWatch Pro 5 starts off pretty poorly, and I don't know why it's doing that. And again, later in the track, when I went on a run for a little bit longer, I did notice that the accuracy tended to kind of run off near the end of the activity for some reason, and I'm not sure why. I'd say overall, it's a okay heart rate sensor on the TicWatch Pro 5 in my testing so far. Definitely not perfect, definitely not comparable to an ECG sensor, but if you weren't comparing them, you may not notice these deviations because they did happen for brief moments. Overall, the accuracy isn't terrible, but it's not amazing either, so just keep that in mind. And on the topic of heart rate sensors and accuracy, it's important to keep in mind that I'm just a sample of one, and this heart rate sensor may react differently on your body with your body fat percentage and hair color and all the variables that play into these optical heart rate sensors. They're kind of all over the place, so hopefully they work better for you than they do me. All I can do is share my experience. And with that, we have come to the conclusion of this video, and now I wanna share my final thoughts and who I think the TicWatch Pro 5 is for. Obviously, if you're an Apple user, this watch is not for you because you simply can't use it. It's also a $350 watch, which is not cheap, and there's a lot of other options out there. If you're into like dedicated sports like running or cycling, I would suggest checking out something from Garmin or Koros or Sunto because those are more sport-oriented devices that have better battery life, more features, and they're just built for that purpose. The TicWatch Pro 5 is really an alternative to something like the Apple Watch, because really, if you're an Android user and you really want an Apple Watch, this is the watch you're gonna wanna look at or something like it, because it's got a lot of similar features with making phone calls and an app store. You're able to download lots of third-party apps, lots of capabilities here. You can take and make phone calls and respond to text messages and things like that, all on your wrist, which is really cool. Now, if I was treating this as a dedicated running watch, I would complain a little bit about the heart rate accuracy, along with the fact 
fact that the Tick Exercise app is a little bit hard to read because of the colors and fonts they use. I did love that. And of course, the battery life is not amazing when you're out in a GPS activity at around 10 hours in that high performance mode. However, at the end of the day, this is not a sport designed watch. This is a smartwatch with some sport capabilities. So if you really want something to do at all, something to wear in your everyday life that makes your life easier with calendar events and your agenda popping up and a calculator on board, this is gonna be the watch to get because you can also do that and go for a run with it with pretty decent GPS accuracy and okay heart rate performance. And finally, we're at that point in the video where I want to hear from you. Are you interested in the TickWatch Pro 5? If you are, let me know down below why. What feature sold you on it? Are you getting one? Are you gonna skip this one and just use something else? Let me know down below. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing down below because that really helps me out. And finally, if you're planning on picking up a TickWatch Pro 5 or any other watch I showed off in this video, check out the links in the description down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. And I've been talking for a long time now. I think I'm done. I think I covered everything I want to. I probably missed something important. And if I did, I'm sorry. Let me know about that in the comments below too. Okay, I gotta go. Bye.